Hey, what's going on everyone? So this video, interesting one, because uh, this is actually a custom water cooling kit, right? With hardline tubing inside, uh, and it really comes with everything you could possibly want. Uh, and, and I would say a pretty complex custom loop. Again, rigid tubing, so you're, you're gonna have to bend this stuff. You're gonna need a few extra tools that aren't included in the kit, but the cool thing about this is you're gonna get the fittings, you're gonna get the reservoir pump combo, you're gonna get the CPU block, you're gonna get the tubing, the coolant, the radiator, and some really dope looking fans from Thermal Take as well. Um, and uh, just disclosure, I'm not being paid for this video or anything. They sent it to me and to, you know, just told me to review it. So uh, I'm actually gonna build with it, uh, but I'm gonna save that for a separate video because again, this stuff takes a long time to assemble and put together. You've seen my other custom loop builds, you know that. Uh, so we're gonna do a run through of all the parts you get in this thing and then we'll start preparing the loop uh, in the second video so stay tuned for that for now here's what you get inside let's take all the parts out this will be interesting so I'm gonna try to set up my tripod here as best I can and then uh, we're just gonna snap our fingers and have everything laid out on the table okay here we go three two one all right, so here it all is, and uh, it's actually quite a bit. Now, there are a few things I am not sure about that honestly I won't be able to give you a definitive answer on until I actually build with all of these components, and you all know that custom loops take a long time to put together. So, uh, we're gonna try our best to analyze the parts at hand and uh, make best with, I guess, what we have at our disposal um, to kind of give a review on it. This isn't gonna be a very in-depth review. I just wanna show you guys what you get for your money in the box here. Because something I wanna point out, especially if you're looking at this right here, these are all control boxes. And you get one of these with each of the kits you buy. So if you buy these three fans separately, which you can do, you'll get one of these control boxes. If you buy uh, you know, the CP block down there separately, you'll get a control box. It's just, uh, it's interesting because Thermaltake hasn't cut down on any of those resources uh, with the bundle. So you're gonna get four of these, and I really hope you don't have to use all four because that will be a major pain from a cable management perspective, regardless of the case you use. Uh, so okay, we're gonna walk through each of these. I'll show you some B-roll and uh, talk about what each of these is gonna do, some things I see that are missing, maybe we can use a few more of, and uh, some just pointers before you actually dive into a custom loop build like this one right here. So what's so special about this new fitting? Well, it's actually a three-piece design, which is not standard. Most of the time you'll see two. Uh, so you'll have a collar, like this one right here. You slide this in through your tubing, pretend my finger's the tubing here. So you slide this backwards onto the tube, and then the area you wanna connect will funnel into more or less a concave-shaped area, uh, and that is where the G quarter thread is on one side. So let's say it's a CP block you're connecting it to, and you gotta kinda wedge that tubing into place, slide the collar down, and screw it in, right? I'm trying my best to give you a, a decent visual here. So the third piece is what simplifies things a lot. When you have to wedge that, that tube right into this concave shape, it can be difficult. You have to bend the tube, you have to pull it back sometimes to get it to align perfectly with that opening to slide it in. But this base plate is special. Again, it's flat. So this slides in on one side through a G quarter fitting, and then the other side has the collar. But you're wondering, okay, where's the connection? Where's the seal, right? How do you prevent the leak? That's where the middleman comes in. So you slide this in through the tube there are o-rings inside two of them I believe yep so you have a pretty proper seal there and then uh, you can see these are pretty loose there, there's a lot of play there that's not to you know, not to worry about that though because the the seal itself the connection is more or less taken care of by the middle piece not the collar uh, and then all you got to do is just align the two up. You do not have to you know, pry the tubing back and forth because there is no longer a concave shape here uh, with that middle piece. I don't know what you wanna call this middle piece. Uh, then it just kinda of sits there. So you don't have to you know, worry about prying your tubing or anything like that, especially if you have SLI graphics cards. Those tubes are difficult to get aligned, especially when they're already installed in your motherboard. So this simply allows them to slide in place, align them perfectly. The collar rests on top and screws into the base plate it's a very simple process. I like this a lot more actually, despite having a third piece here, very simple. By the way, I'm not entirely sure if uh, only having two 90 degree fittings here is gonna be enough. I'd like to see maybe four, that would give a bit more flexibility to the builder. Uh, two is just cutting it really close. You might have some really tight bends where these come in very handy uh, and just having simple you know, linear G quarter fittings might not be enough. Uh, seeing that you only have two of these here to work with. So uh, we'll see when we build. You're gonna have to keep the runs pretty simple. Uh, knowing that you're only gonna have two of these to work with. This is the Pacific W4 Plus CPU block. This is a universal block, meaning it'll work with anything from LGA 775 up to AM4 on AMD side, LGA 2011, 2066, what have you. Uh, so you can buy this and, and be worry-free. It has a nickel-plated 
uh, base here. It's copper in design and it has RGBs that run all the way around the outside. So in the pictures, it looks really cool. I can't wait to see what this looks like in real life. It does have uh, addressable RGBs up top via this pin and it does come with a software control box like this one here. So you can run several uh, different units into this box and control it all uh, via Thermaltake software. So it's nice to have uh, that cohesive sort of software unifying everything here. This is all Thermaltake gear again, so it should be pretty straightforward. I actually like the way the block looks. It's it's simple. It's just, I don't know, it's circular and it's black and it's a little bland in that respect, but I think when the RGB is turned on, it's going to look really nice, that RGB ring design there. Uh, it's just, uh, it's simple enough to look really good in my book. This is a Thermaltake Ring Plus 12 fan. It's a 120 millimeter fan and it does have RGBs running all the way around the outside uh, with some bias here in the frame too, so you can see the RGBs from the side and also from the back. And you do have the sticker here. Of course, the sticker looks a bit more ugly than the front and that's the case for most fans. Uh, so if you run these with like an intake and you're mounting these on the left side of your radiator when you're looking at your case from the uh, from the left panel then you're going to see the sticker and that's disappointing but from the front it looks great i like that thermal take redesigned their logo made it much uh, more inviting much simpler and it doesn't have that weird you know gaudy color scheme going on so uh, i think it's a very good looking fan and i think when the rgbs are on it's going to look even better by the way if you're wondering how the fan connects to your motherboard it actually doesn't this fan is designed to connect to a software box so you'll get another one like this included uh, in the ring plus fan kit and you just connect one of these into the box like so and then there you go. Now the box will connect to your motherboard and then you'll use the software to control both the fan speed and the RGB accents. Now one of the reasons why I'm glad that you use C1000 Pure Coolant is because it'll take on the color more or less of the RGBs that you shine at it. Uh, and if you want, you can add dyes that you can buy on Thermaltake's website designed to be used with C1000 Pure. Um, so this is gonna be more or less like a closed ecosystem, right? So you're not gonna wanna use this coolant with any copper radiator. Thermaltake's been using aluminum rads for a long time. I'm not the biggest fan of those. I I wish they had switched to copper a long time ago uh, again, but uh, this is made specifically for aluminum rads. If you use this to copper rads, you're going to have issues. Guaranteed, it's going to gunk up, it's going to it's going to react with the copper, uh, and uh, you're going to have a really bad time, right? Cleaning out not only the, the radiator, but all the crap that gets thrown through your system because you didn't use the right fluid. So keep this within Thermaltake's ecosystem. You're going to be perfectly fine with it. If you want to, you know, dye this thing a certain color, you can buy the dyes on Thermaltake's website. They're not expensive at all. Now, speaking of the radiator, this one is pretty beefy, 64 millimeter thickness. So it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely chunkier than a traditional 30 or, or 45 millimeter radiator. Uh, and this one is again, aluminum. So you only want to use C1000 coolant with this stuff or anything that's, you know, made specifically for aluminum rads, aluminum loops. Uh, if you're mixing this with like nickel plated stuff, perfectly fine. Nickel's not going to react in the short term with anything really. And that's why they use nickel. Uh, but if you're using copper rads where there's bare copper, exposed to the fluid in your loop, then do not combine it with anything else that, that, you know, that has a bare aluminum exposed in the loop. That is not good. You're not going to have a fluid that really keeps both in check in terms of which one galvanizes. Uh, and so, yeah, just uh, don't mix them. That's all I can really say about that. Uh, this is really thick. Again, it's it's got uh, four ports here up top. So I took off two of the caps. You, you do get uh, G quarter caps to, to close off two of these, actually three, because there's a third one down below. And this one is more or less like a drain port. Uh, so if you want to use something like a, you know, a ball valve or something, uh, and then use that to, to flush the fluid, if you want to do that, you have a port down here that'll be really effective. It's really a pain in the, in, in the butt to, uh, to flush fluid out of radiators specifically, especially when they're standing upright, because again, all the fluid has to leave up top. So it makes no sense for fluid to exit up top unless you flip your system upside down. This gets rid of that issue though, uh, but you're going to need an extra, an extra, you know, fitting or two if you want to use a ball valve down here. One's not included, by the way, in the kit. And one other cool thing included with the radiator, this is like an RGB strip that you just adhere to the side of the radiator. It's the perfect thickness. It's cut specifically for the rad I just showed you. Uh, so it's got like a 64 millimeter or so thickness. Uh, and it again, just adheres with 3M tape. Uh, to the side of the rad. You can use Velcro straps as well if you plan on moving this at some point, uh, but it's pretty sticky as is, and I just recommend just sticking this on there. This is really only gonna look good uh, with the Thermaltake rad because it's 
cut specifically to those dimensions. So adds a, a bit of a, a wow factor to the rad. An RGB rad of sorts is definitely going to look unique in an RGB build. Now the last two things, we have the reservoir pump combo and the PETG tubing, which PETG tubing is just tubing, so there's really nothing special about that. Uh, but this is a D5 uh, pump at the base here. It's a thermal take branded D5 pump. You do have control of the pump speed down below. Sorry, my neighbor's being pretty loud across the street. Uh, and this is an acrylic reservoir tube, uh, and it has two ports up top, along with a cable that you can use to control the integrated RGB LEDs. Yes, this reservoir has those. Uh, and it looks like you have, let's see, on this side, you have one port at the base here. So uh, three ports in total with this one. I'd like to see a little more flexibility, maybe with the number of ports on the reservoir, but uh, for an integrated one here, and you do get the stands included as well, so it's pretty versatile with the way it can be mounted. This one isn't bad for being included in a uh, yeah in a kit of sorts for a custom loop. Now, if you're wondering what this project will become, we have the PCO11 Air from Lee and Lee here, and uh, I'm gonna try my best to fit all these components inside of, uh, of this case. It's a beautiful case. I've reviewed the dynamic, check it out right here. Uh, but we'll be doing this this review and build video in a future uh, future date. So stay tuned for that, uh, but uh, look forward to it because this is when we'll get to utilize all these components and I'll be able to give you my final assessment on how I think they look and how they all function. By the way, if you want this kit, if you're curious about it, maybe you wanna just jump on in, you can check out the link down below in the video description and that's where you can buy individually all of these components or the entire bundle. There are several different tiers of this bundle, uh, but if you want the plus, that's when you get everything, all the RGB components components, and it's the one I recommend if you care a lot about aesthetics. With that said, I'm going to end the video, and if you like this one, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. Make sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us and talking to my thumb, my hand, the entire time, because I haven't shown myself in this video. It's kind of weird doing it like that.